Hello, my name is Professor Matthew Schmidt and I'd like to welcome you to genetics. As you can see, uh, this slide is entitled Gene Expression and Protein Synthesis and that's what the thrust of the next several videos are going to be about, the next several sessions. So we're going to talk about this, well let's talk about it right now, but we have to start somewhere. We're really getting into molecular biology and not just from the point of view of DNA, from the point of view of how the information encoded in DNA actually is manifested in an organism or a cell. So we're starting in this session with transcription, RNA, and the central dogma. These are all uh, related topics, but before we start, let's do something that we've done before, and that is to sort of see where we are. I, I don't necessarily mean in the course, although that's partially what I mean, but I mean where historically do we stand in terms of our understanding based on everything that we've thought about so far. So we have this idea hopefully ingrained in our heads that structure and function are very importantly going together, but that there are different ways of getting at one versus the other. So we've got now the structure of DNA down courtesy of Watson and Crick. We understand um, courtesy of them as well as Maselson and Stahl and others how it can replicate and we also understand the basic idea of how it can store information and allow variation. If you remember replication, storage, and variation were the three things that we said needed to be able to be done by the, mo the molecule that you know, DNA that was going to be the genetic material. But we are at a point where we don't specifically understand how the information in DNA is used to determine phenotype and how mechanistically that actually occurs. What we do know, because functionally remember, starting with Beetle and Tatum and Ingram we talked about, um, we know that somehow, remember the one gene, one enzyme idea, we may have modified it a bit so that it was one gene, one polypeptide. But the bottom line is we do know from that and putting all of this together that somehow the information in DNA is used to make a polypeptide that has a specific function. So we want to start to really unravel how this occurs. Now, we haven't spoken a lot about RNA yet, but this is the time to do it. So. A lot of things, I mean, after Watson and Crick published their paper, things started to move really, really quickly. So in the 1950s, uh, not too long after they published their paper, an important discovery was made. Now, the initial experiments were done, so many of these initial experiments were done in E. coli in bacteria. But we're not going to go into the details of this experiment. But suffice it to say that uh, some experiments with bacteriophages in E. coli implied that RNA did have a role as an intermediate in the process of gene expression, which really means gene expression is the using the information in DNA to make a polypeptide. Usually that's what it means anyway. I want to look, again, we're not really going to go into the experiment, but logically, even though that experiment was important initially, I think you'll be able to relate to this one a little bit more because it was also found that in eukaryotic cells, so of course the one big difference between eukaryotes and prokaryotes is the fact that the DNA is sequestered in the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell, whereas the protein making machinery, the ribosomes, are outside the nucleus, right? So what they showed was if you l radioactively labeled RNA nucleotides and sort of literally followed where in the cell they went, uh, over time they first were collected in the nucleus, the idea being around where the DNA is, and then they literally migrate out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm. So once that was determined, there's a very strong implication that s RNA acts in some way or another as an information intermediary or intermediate. In other words, somewhere between the DNA and the polypeptide, we're now getting another step in there that that involves RNA. Now again, biochemists knew RNA existed just like they knew DNA existed before its significance was fully known, 
So now it's time to understand RNA's significance. And it turns out, no offense to DNA, that RNA is a lot more of a versatile and perhaps, perhaps interesting molecule. You can decide. So Francis Crick of Watson and Crick, uh, Watson went on to do a lot of important things, but Crick sort of stayed more in this path of molecular biology and at least was a part of most of the major discoveries about how this all worked. And Crick coined a term to explain the basic flow of information in a cell. If you actually can find some of the papers that Crick originally wrote, you might find them interesting. We're just going to be, you know, jumping to the conclusion, but he explains exactly why he did it this way. So he came up with an idea called the central dogma of molecular biology. Um, just for the record, the word dogma, um, usually some people said this is a bit odd. Dogma in religion means sort of something that's this is the way it is and it's not to be questioned, I think. And um, Crick was asked about this later and he's he said something like, I don't think I really knew what that word meant. He just meant that it was a strong hypothesis or a basic rule type of a thing. And it is a basic rule. It's not to say that this can never, ever, ever be, um, I, I should say it a different way. It's not to say that things must happen this way all of the time and there are no exceptions. But it is a pretty darn good rule that applies most of the time in normal situations. So what he basically said was that DNA is where the initial information resides. RNA is an information intermediate. If we're talking about a eukaryotic cell, which actually he wasn't necessarily, but I wrote here, brings the information from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. Even if you were in a bacterial cell, though uh, this journey doesn't have to be made, but the RNA is still the, the transmitter, the messenger. You've probably heard of messenger RNA from the DNA to the place where the protein is going to be made. And then ultimately, the information in that RNA is going to be used to synthesize a protein, more technically a polypeptide, but this is the idea. And we have a real fancy picture. There's a simple picture. But the central dogma, and sometimes you'll see it in different forms, and um, Crick had some very specific reasons why he did it the way he did. We, we don't need to dwell on that, interesting as it is. But basically, at the risk of being redundant, because this is so central and so vitally important, the basic idea is that in terms of gene expression, which is really what we're thinking about now, right, and protein synthesis. And by the way, the term protein synthesis, that's not a very good uh, bracket there, but it usually means the entire process f of getting from DNA to the, to the protein, all right? But specifically, what the central dogma says is that DNA, I should say that DNA is used and the information in DNA is used to make a messenger RNA copy. We'll talk about different types of RNA, but for now, let's think about messenger RNA. And the process by which that's accomplished is known as transcription. Then the information that's in that messenger RNA ultimately is used by the ribosome and other actors to create a protein and translation is the specific process by which that is accomplished. Now it really isn't part of the information flow but many books will put in this loop over here which is showing that you could almost think of it as dual function because what I mean is DNA in the most fundamental sense really has two roles. One of it is within an organism or a cell to direct the expression of information into something tangible, that is a protein, but also it's the molecule of heredity. I'm not saying these things are totally separate, but when cells divide or when organisms reproduce, DNA has to be able to make a copy of itself, and we know that, right? So what's meant to be depicted here are the major ways that information flows, and going around like this means that basically DNA can make a copy of itself and make more DNA. DNA can also make RNA. DNA can't directly make protein. It